Welcome back to another Carbon Cub FX3 Flying in Alaska video. We had a nice sunny mid-February day, a little bit rare, it snows most of the time up here in February, so we decided to take advantage, see if we could fly the Cub and find a glacier to land on. So we took off out of Merrill Field where the airplane's based, flew across the Chugach Mountains, which you're seeing here, to the east of Anchorage and decided we'd check out the Knick Glacier, see how the weather is, see if we could land on it. Um, so now I'm approaching the glacier, and I do see a nice flat area about nine miles east of the toe of the glacier that looks landable. So I'm going to come up to it, see how it looks, drag my skis, and assess the snow conditions and the conditions of the terrain around this flat area to see if it looks suitable to make a full stop landing on. So now I'm approaching the spot I've picked out, slowing up. Here I'm going to put one notch of flaps in out of the three notches that I have available, so I'm not going to go as nearly as slow as I could because I don't want to put too much weight on the wheels yet in case the snow is very loose and unconsolidated and it feels like the airplane's going to sink down too much into it because the snowpack up here could be very deep and I don't want to put too much weight on the wheels. So I touch down, start making a set of tracks to give myself a spot to land on. Now I'm not going to come to a full stop here, obviously. I'm going to lay this nice long set of tracks. I want it to be as long as possible. And then I'm going to take off again without stopping, come back around, and assess the condition of the snow from the air. I'm going to take a look at it, see how the snow is consolidating and make another set of tracks directly on top of the ones that I just laid to further consolidate the snow, firm it up and give the airplane a nice solid place to land if I do decide to come and make a full stop landing. You might have noticed that I was landing upslope there. That is the preferred way to land on a slope in an airplane because you can use gravity to help stop the speed of the airplane as you land. I'm flying back down slope here. I'm going to make another left turn and line back up with that same set of tracks that I laid initially. It is about 4.30 p.m. local time as I'm doing this. You can see the sun starting to set behind the mountains, but I did look out today with the sunny weather. Uh, it's very difficult to land in spots like this if it's cloudy because when it's cloudy, the sky looks light gray, almost white, everything around you looks white, and all the terrain and sky features blend together, and it makes it very difficult to judge your height above the snow, and it makes it difficult to see any terrain features like snow drifts, ditches, or even crevasses that might be present in this glacier. So you do need a good blue sky day to give you the contrast that's required to be able to land on a spot like this. Here's my second pass back into that same set of tracks that I laid initially. Going to try and touch down in the same spot and firm up these tracks even more. So that's what I do. This time I've got two notches of flaps in out of the three notches on the airplane, so I'm a little bit slower. I've got more weight on the wheels. I'm just packing this snow down a little further to make sure that it's firm to land on on the next pass. So I continue to make these tracks up the slope of the glacier. The elevation where I'm landing here is at about 3,500 feet above sea level. Then I take back off once I get to the end of the area that I'm choosing to land in. And now I'm going to make some more tracks. So not only do you want to lay a set of tracks up slope in the direction that you're going to land, but you also need to think about what you're going to do after you land when you land on a slope like this. And if you land upslope, logically, you want to take off downslope. You're using gravity to help you. And in order to take off downslope, you're going to have to make a 180 degree turn. So what I'm going to do here is make a set of tracks perpendicular to the initial ones I laid so that I have some tracks to turn into when I make that initial turn 90 degrees perpendicular to the slope. 
um, so that later I can turn down slope. So this is going to be a perpendicular set of tracks to the first set that I've laid. So there I do that. I actually should have made this perpendicular set of tracks a little bit longer, um, but it was good enough to do what I needed. And now I'm going to come back and lay a set of downslope tracks for my takeoff run um, when I'm going to take off after I make my full stop landing. So I'm making a, another turn back around here and I'm going to land down slope. I'm continuing to look at these tracks that I've made as I do all this, judge the condition of the snow, judge how the snow is consolidating after the tracks have been made. But now I'm going to lay that down slope set of tracks parallel to the first set I laid and perpendicular to the one I laid just prior to this. So we're going to touch down just after that perpendicular set of tracks, make some down slope tracks, and this is where I'm going to take off after I stop. So in my judgment, at this point, I can tell the snow feels pretty good. It's pretty firm. It's not too loose. So I'm thinking it's going to be a good spot to go ahead, make a full stop landing, shut the airplane down, and walk around for a bit and enjoy the glacier. So now I'm going to set up for my full stop landing. Going to make a right turn to line back up with my initial set of tracks. And I make it a bit of a, a teardrop turn to the right initially and then back around to the left to line back up facing upslope. You can see the 9,000 foot peaks all around the ring of the glacier. This is a, a large valley glacier. And now I'm just lining back up to get ready for my final approach for the full stop landing. I've got all three notches of flaps in now. I'm making my final approach at about 45 miles per hour. Coming in over my initial tracks, make a nice soft touchdown on these consolidated tracks that I've laid. And I've got more than enough room to bring the airplane to a stop don't even have the tail in the snow yet and now that it feels nice and I've decided to stop I'm gonna go ahead and point the airplane down slope before I do shut down so that I don't have uh, too much taxiing to do before it's time to take off so I'm gonna make a right turn here into that perpendicular set of tracks that I've laid and remember when I said I wish I'd made the perpendicular set longer well this is why because I kind of needed a little more space to make this 180 degree turn back down slope, but it didn't really matter that much because these Summit SS 2300 skis have so much flotation that on this snow really wasn't an issue to go out of my tracks a little bit and I had plenty of room to get back into my tracks before I shut down. The rudder is really the main way you can steer here. You don't really have much tailwheel steering authority like you would on pavement. So you do have a decreased amount of turning authority and an increased turning radius. So everything's good. I'm going to shut down the engine. I'm going to get out of the airplane, stretch my legs, enjoy the scenery, change the battery on my camera, then get back in the airplane and take back off. Now as I get back in the airplane you can see the size of the post holes that my legs made while I was walking around. I sank up to my thighs as I was walking around to change the battery on the GoPro camera mounted on my wing. But as I get the engine started back up, the first thing I'm going to do is apply a little bit of power on the engine so that if my skis have frozen to the surface of the snow, I can break them free. It's a good thing to know about that as soon as possible because you might have to shut back down and push a little bit if they've frozen too solid. But now I'm going to put my flaps in for takeoff. I'm taking off out of snow. I've been taught to use all flaps, all three flap notches. So that's what I do here. I lift the tail up and taking off down slope. It doesn't take very much distance at all before I'm back in the air. Raising my flaps back up. 
Now I'm just going to pan the camera around so that you can enjoy the scenery of this glacier as I take back off and head into the sunset back towards Anchorage. Here's our triumphant return to Merrill Field after the glacier landing and I'm going to demonstrate to you how the ski strip at Merrill Field works. In the winter time, runways 5 and 23 are dedicated for ski planes. So you can see here they leave it covered in snow and if you're a ski equipped airplane you can use this runway and if you have straight skis, meaning you don't have any wheels coming out the bottom of your skis like I do on this airplane, you can park by this runway and you don't have to worry about taxiing on pavement and scraping up the bottoms of your skis if that's what you want to do. Unfortunately because of where I park my airplane I've got to have wheel penetration skis which is what the kind of skis on my airplane right here are so that I can taxi to my parking spot. So it's a 2,000 foot long ski runway nice and easy clearing the runway here and I'm going to taxi back and park the airplane. Thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video.